the story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. And whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trusts. I will exercise my art solely for the cure. The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro Goldwyn Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Now the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Blair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. A clump of gray-white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York, the nerve center of medical progress where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Blair General Hospital, where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. Good morning, Dr. Carew. Good morning, Miss Parker. Isn't it an enchanting morning this morning? Not especially. Well, maybe it's just me then. Oh, there's good news today. There is? Oh, yes, indeed. Guess who's arriving. Oh, that. Well, I don't have to guess. I've already heard. Isn't it wonderful? Terrific. Is uh, Dr. Gillespie here? Yes. He's there in his office. Dr. Kildare's with him. Well, I'll just go right on in and surprise them. Oh, they're going to be happy to hear about this. I wouldn't bet on it. Uh, top of the morning to both of you gentlemen. Well, now, what's all this, Dr. Carew? You're walking about two feet above the carpet. Jimmy, it's one of two things, vitamins or benzodrine. <laughs> now, Dr. Kildare, Dr. Gillespie, don't start twitting me. You'll be just as excited when you find out about it. Find out about what? About the arrival from England on the 11 o'clock plane of Lady Donaby. Lady Donaby? Yes. I mm. just sent Wayman to bring her from the airport. You mean she's back again this year for another one of those month-long rest cures? Now, Dr. Kildare, let's not be facetious. She's entering their hospital for observation and examination. Observation and examination. She merely comes here to recover from the year's social world. She wastes our time and takes up a suite that could be used by someone who really needs it. Carew, you must have a hole in your head. Oh, I did so hope you'd act differently about it this year. Different about it? Why doesn't she go to a hotel like anybody else? Oh, dear. Dr. Carew, would this attitude of yours have anything to do with that donation you tried to get from Lady Donaby last year? Dr. Kildare, must you be so insufferably blunt? By the tarnation. That's it. Mm -hmm. Well, after all, this hospital does need funds, you know. And no one knows it better than we do, Dr. Carew. But do we have to take in borders in order to raise money? Oh, now, that is a complete misinterpretation, Dr. Kildare. Aside from the question of money, uh, Lady Donaby does suffer ill health, and I feel we are honored to have such a charming young woman. Ah, young woman. According to rumor, Lady Donaby, before she managed to hook Lord Donaby in a weak moment, was one of the original Floridora gals. Yeah, third from the end, as I heard. Oh, yeah. right, dear, it's just no use trying to reason with you two. It's just no mm. use at all. Carew, suppose we make a bargain with you. A bargain? Yeah. This woman is coming here for observation and examination. So that's exactly what she gets. Oh, good heavens, no. I'm sure she wouldn't like that at all. No, do I imagine the Board of Regents would like it if they knew a patient was spending a month here without even a diagnosis being made. Oh, dear. And, of course, that would reflect back on me as head diagnostician. Oh, dear, dear. I think it's only your duty to inform them right away, Dr. Gillespie. Here, here can you reach the phone all Oh, right? dear, 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 dear. No, thank you, Jimmy, thank you. No. Let's see. No, stop. Uh, uh, oh, dear gentlemen, uh, you will be as easy on her as possible. Now, just relax, Carew. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you know us. <laughs> um, you there, young woman. 
I assume you're employed here from that get-up you're wearing. That's right. I'm a nurse. Diana Werner. Is there something I can do for you? You certainly can. You can get me a room and some service and the manager. Do you mean Dr. Carew? That's it, Carew. Well, if you'll just have a seat hey, there in the lounge. Hey, there she is, talking to Miss Vane. How are you, Lady Hood? So, you finally remembered leaving me here, you half-witted speed maniac. Uh, she's talking about when I brought her from the airport, Doc. You're still a little shook up, huh? I'll shake you up. Uh, well, young man, who are you? I'm Dr. Kildare. I, I assume you're Lady Donnerby. You never made a better assumption. And you've met Wayman, of course, and man Miss Werner. Oh, yes, we've met. And uh, this is Dr. Gillespie, our chief diagnostician. Good. All very well and good, but I don't need a doctor. I need a rule. Well, of course you do, so if you would just go up to the registry desk on the second floor, they'll be glad to take you. I them. will not. I have never registered in this hospital before, and I won't start now. Where's that little pipsqueak Carew? I'm afraid you're out of luck, Lady Donovan. He's barricaded in his office. You'll have to deal with us. I see. All right, let's start dealing. I demand that you have my luggage brought from the airport at once. I demand a suite within five minutes. I demand the presence of the hospital dietitian within ten minutes. Lady Donnerby, do... shut up. What? In this hospital, I give the orders, not the patients. Well. And you can take one or two choices. Either get up there and register or call a taxi and get out. Now make up your mind. Shall we go, Jimmy? Right. See you later, Diana. Okay, Jimmy. Well, now, you don't find a man like that very often these days. <laughs> He's quite a lad. Well, I think so. Knows his own mind. He can be awfully stubborn when he thinks he's right. And he's not too bad looking either. Most people think Dr. Kildare is rather handsome. Kildare? Well, who said anything about Kildare? Oh, uh, <clears throat> now, where did Dr. Gillespie tell me I must go to uh, register? <laughs> realize that this is the first chance I've had this week to be alone with you. Of course, Jimmy. Why do you think I cornered you here in your office? <laughs> Baby, <laughs> where you're involved, I corner. Awfully easy. Oh, I'm not so sure. No? Why not? Well, it has been a week, you know. Oh, I've been stuck to work every single night. Never had a fuller schedule. However, I'm not working right at this moment. And, uh... Yes, please. Dr. Kildare, would you mind looking over the... Oh, Oh, well, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't know that... It's all right, Parker. What is it? Oh, uh, nothing, Dr. Kildare. Nothing at all that won't keep until... Uh, well, until... I'm just awfully sorry. Uh... <laughs> this is a great example of tactful exit. Well, the heart's in the right place, I suppose. How about yours? Oh, it's showing some rather strange symptoms lately. Huh? Jumpy, I call it. Interesting coincidence. Mine's been doing the same thing. I wonder if there's any connection. You tell me, Jimmy. You have a doctor. <laughs> well, I... Oh, good morning, Jimmy. Uh, Miss Verner. Uh, it was a good morning. Why is everyone acting so unfriendly? Parker just tried to shoo me away. I oh, don't pay any attention to Jimmy, Dr. Gillespie. He doesn't mean it. Why, it's all right. It's a very good attitude in view of the examination we're due to make in about five minutes. Hmm? Oh, oh, yes, Lady Donnerby. I've no. forgotten about them. Well, if you're going up there in five minutes, I'd better get it ready. You mean you got stuck with her? How come? Oh, I asked for it, Jimmy. Oh. I knew you'd be on the case. Bye. <laughs> of course, I don't know what a general condition may show, but I think we should concentrate on that game leg. Game leg? Diana? Jimmy? Oh, Lady Donnerby, yes, well... From what she said, her trouble is apparently sciatica, so it may be tough to do anything. Sciatica nearly always had an uncertain etiology. Yes, I agree. But we've still got to make a stab at it. We're out on a limb with Carew, you know. Yeah, I know. All right, Doctor. Lioness lurks in her den. For two days now, you've embarrassed me with undignified questions, poked me full of needle holes, and I don't mind telling you I'm fed up with it. Ah, fiddle faddle. You haven't had so much attention in years. I didn't come here for attention. I came here for a rest. Well, now at least you know a little more about yourself. 
Heart, lungs, general physical condition, all perfect. Young man, I knew that before I ever laid eyes on this place. There's nothing wrong with me that a little peace and quiet won't cure. Mm, what about this bad leg? Peace and quiet won't help you get rid of that cane. Nor will anything else. I've had sciatica off and on for five years. Been to the best doctors in Europe. Boiled myself in the best hot springs on the continent. The works. And I won't have you messing around with it. It can't be cured. Mm, I'm not so sure of that. Uh-oh, uh -oh, Jimmy. Sleeping dog. Well, I've got an idea. It may be a particular type of sciatica, and I'd like to take some x-rays of your spine in order to find out. X-rays? Mm -hmm. Well, I thought I'd already had the full treatment. And now it's x-rays. Well, it's the only way to be sure. Decision's up to you, of course, but I strongly advise agreeing with it. Dr. Kildare, I won't do it. I absolutely will not do it. Oh, it's all right, Jimmy. She'll do it. Dr. Gillespie, you're a fascinating man in a primitive sort of way. Oh, I know. A diamond in the rough with a heart of gold to mix a pair of metaphors. Maybe, but that still doesn't give you any right to order me around. Well, it's up to you. We haven't found a thing wrong with you. And if you won't permit further examination, you can't stay here in the hospital. What? So I might as well call the front office and arrange to have you released at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, boys. Let's not be too hasty about this. Come in. Hiya, boss. I got the stretcher here to take her down to x-ray. They got the machine all set up and wait. Mm -hmm. Well, now, somebody must have been pretty sure of himself. I guess it's one of two choices again. Taxi to a hotel or Wayman stretcher down to X-ray. I'll push it slow, Your Excellent. Honest, I will. My arm, Lady Donnerby. Uh, thank you. Mm, here, Wayman. You take her feet. <laughs> Found it, Jimmy. You're sticking your neck out a mile and a half. You're going off the deep end and jumping at conclusions. And you're mixing metaphors again. No, I started on a hunch, all right, thinking maybe it was something we could diagnose definitely. But now I'm sure of it. Well, I'm not. No, there's no doubt of it. It's a herniation of the nucleus pulposus. Ah, it's a wild guess. Tied up with wishful thinking. Why? Everything points to it. The fact that only one leg is affected, that the pain is intermittent, disappears suddenly sometimes. Well, that's insufficient evidence. It doesn't mean a thing. Well, I'll go on record with it. Well, sure, Nick, Jimmy. I'll wait for the x-rays. All right. Take a look at these. By the great horn spoon, a double cross. <laughs> yeah, I'd already seen them. It was a dirty trick. Yeah, look at this one. Notice the cartilage disc between the last lumbar vertebrae and the sacrum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a crack, all right, on the left side. And the pulposus is protruding into the spinal canal, pushing against the nerve root. There's your sciatica. Why argue, Jimmy? You're right, you're right, you're right. No <laughs> doubt about it. We're lucky. This is one we know what to do about. Well, now you are jumping at conclusions. She's a hard-headed dame, and there's a limit to how far you can push her. Furthermore, she's had the opinions of the best doctors in Europe. Jimmy, you'll never convince her. No, I think I will. In fact, I'm not only going to convince her, I'm going to operate her. Uh -huh. And I'm going to cure her. Now, you wait and see. The works. We return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. I don't have any idea how he found out, Dr. Gillespie. All I know is that he's on his way down here and he's in a tizzy. Yeah, I'll bet he is. I just can't imagine who could have told him. Ah, come now, Pug. I can imagine very easily. Really? Who? You. 
Huh? You confounded idiot shooting off that big mouth of yours all over the hospital. I did not. One of these days, I'm going to remove that flapping tongue of yours and pickle it. Well, I like that. Hey, uh, what's going on here? Oh, come in, Jimmy. Come in, come in. Oh, mm. blabbermouth here has managed to let Carew find out the whole story on the Donaby diagnosis. He's on his way down now. Dr. Kildare, I did not. And I won't stay here and be insulted. I only told three of the nurses and I swore them to secrecy. So there. Uh, that woman is a positive genius at doing the wrong thing. Oh, I don't think it did any real harm. Why, you blow his top. I know, I know. But I think I can cork him up again. Well, I hope so, Jimmy. Come in. Dr. Kildare. Oh, I hope I'm here in time. In time for what, Dr. Carew? Dr. Kildare, you haven't told Lady Donaby your diagnosis. No, not yet. Ah, uh, thank heaven. Any reason I shouldn't? Of course there is. Can't you see? Why, she'll blame us for recommending an operation. <laughs> we didn't give her sciatica. That is not the point. She'll still remember Blair's place that wanted to operate on her. And we won't have the slightest chance of getting any financial... Oh, <clears throat> Dr. Kildare, I absolutely forbid you to say a word to her about the diagnosis. All right, you're the boss. What? You mean you're going to be reasonable about this? Yeah, I'm amazed myself. Why not? It isn't my responsibility. Well. Of course, some other doctor will probably make the same diagnosis sometime. Oh, yes, possibly, but that's no concern of ours. And we are on record here as having made a thorough examination, complete with x-rays. Yes, we noted always for other... What do you mean? A wealthy woman like Lady Donaby undoubtedly has very competent legal advisors. I'd say they'd probably sue for 50 or maybe a hundred to thousand dollars. Oh, dear. I never thought of that. Something else, Jimmy. There'll probably be a lot of notoriety. She's prominent enough. Oh, dear, dear. Oh, sure. I can see the headlines. Society doctor indicted in malpractice conspiracy. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Uh, head of Blair Hospital begins prison term today. See page two for pictures. Oh, dear. Well, there flew Carew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm afraid we're going to find Lady Donna be a whole lot tougher. <laughs> boys really mean to stand there and try to convince me that I ought to be operated on merely because of a little shadow on a piece of film. Well, it's not quite that ridiculous, Lady Donnelly. That's only one final piece of evidence that ties in with the symptoms I mentioned. Evidence, symptoms, poppycock. Why didn't those European doctors find out about it? I couldn't say. If it's the operation you're worried about, forget it. It's comparatively simple and Kildare is one of the best surgeons in the country. You agree with this idea of his, Dr. Gillespie? Certainly. No question about it. An operation would mean you could throw away that cane, be free of any more discomfort, and forget you ever had sciatica. If you're right, of course. I know I'm right. Oh, you do, huh? Well, of course, it's up to you to decide, Lady Donaby. Well, I'll tell you. The whole thing sounds just too simple. So simple, I'm not going to have it done. Well, I think you're making a mistake. Well, Jimmy, just it's a... no use, no use. We're wasting our time. I never saw a more contrary human being in my life. Well, you just try looking in a mirror, you old Airedale. Airedale? Yes, I've got you figured out perfectly. You're me all over again. Ooh, I certainly hope not. Come on, Jimmy, let's go. All right. Lady Donaby, I still hope you'll reconsider your decision. I have already, Dr. Kildare. When do you want to operate? Hmm? Oh, Oh, Grouchy was right, you know. I am contrary. Why, the great horn. <laughs> I simply don't believe the operation is going to help. And I want to have the horse laugh on both of you. <laughs> we'll take the chance. How about nine o'clock tomorrow morning? Nine's too early. I'm a late sleeper. Uh -huh. Make it ten. Ah, cantankerous, stubborn, mean. A woman after my own heart. <laughs> Dear, oh dear. Stop. Stop, Dr. Gillespie. Stop. Hold everything. Stop what, Carew? What's the matter with you? You should know what's the matter. Where is Dr. Kildare? How do I know? I'm not running a hospital information service. Please. No, quick, Dr. Gillespie. This is a crisis. Fine. It's been over three hours since the last one. We've got to find him at once. Well, I'll look through my desk, if you like. Miss Parker said the last time she saw him, he was headed for surgery. Well, that's quite possible. But that's exactly what we've got to stop. 
for. I'd go stop it. I'm busy myself. Dr. Gillespie, I do wish you'd learn to cooperate. Cooperate, Dr. Gillespie? Are you causing trouble again? Gildare. Oh, good. We're saved. I didn't even know we were lost. Dr. Gildare, I have made a final and absolute decision. The Donnerby operation must be cancelled. Well, that's a very interesting decision anyway. There is nothing that can change my mind. You see, I had a long talk with our legal advisor. Indeed, someone said he died months ago. Please. <laughs> now, as for all those terrible things you said might happen, our attorney advises me that they were nothing but, well, to put it baldly, flim-flam. That's certainly bald, all right. So, I think it's time both of you listen to reason. Oh, that's too much to hope for. Well, Dr. Carew, you seem to be holding all the cards. What do you propose? That this operation be cancelled. At once. I see. Of course, Dr. Carew, if those are your instructions, people will certainly think I'm out of my mind. I don't see why. You will when I tell you I operated on Lady Donnaby two hours ago. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, where the tarnation did I put those smelling salts? <laughs> oh, never mind, Dr. Gillespie. Here, I'll, I'll just wave a dollar bill under his nose. <laughs> Now, now, don't rush me, boys. As far as I can tell, you've cured that dang sciatica all right, but you've given me aches and pains I never had before. Sore muscles, ones you haven't been using because you were favoring that leg. Just walk slowly now and take it easy. It'll work loose. And you know, you ought to stop every few steps now and give us the horse laugh. <laughs> oh, be quiet, you old billy goat. <laughs> if I hadn't been confident, I wouldn't have agreed to the operation, no matter what I said. Mm, I think we'd better head back to your room now, Lady Donnaby. You've been walking nearly half an hour. Yeah, and doing very well at it, too. Why, we'll have you dancing by the end of the week. That's a good idea. I'll take you up on it. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I only meant that I don't you care didn't... what you meant. I've already accepted. Well, that's what I like in a woman. Subtly. <laughs> well, 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 well. Now, isn't this a happy little group? Good morning, Dr. Crew. You're looking much better this week. I uh, <clears throat> feel fine, Dr. Kildare. Mm. Good morning, my dear Lady Donna Bean. <laughs> Mr. Carew, stop nibbling my hand. <laughs> oh. oh, forgive me, Your Ladyship. It's just my exuberance at seeing you looking so well. Your old charming self again. Mm. But that's their hospital. We always get results when we go into action. Well, I don't know about that we stuff, but actually I have changed my mind about this place. Always regarded it as a glorified rest home. And I'm a little amazed to find at least a couple of the staff are medically competent. Boys, you've got more important work than walking an old woman up and down the hall. Uh, Mr. Carew will take me back to my room. He's not doing anything. Well, uh, now I... <laughs> I mean, of course. Delighted. Uh, don't forget that date of ours, Dr. Gillespie. Oh, to be sure, to be sure, yes. My arm, Lady Donnerby. Uh, thank you. Uh, you call this an arm? I found bigger muscles than clam chowder. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Dr. K, how does it feel to be royal court physician? <sighs> it's like riding a merry-go-round backwards, Dr. G. Ask me the next time I come fast. I I'm still spinning. <laughs> In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. But, Jimmy, it's after 12 o'clock, and Dr. Gillespie never goes out of the hospital at night. What do you suppose he is? I don't know, sweetie. He was very mysterious about the whole thing. 
slipped out around 7 o'clock without a word to anybody. Well, after all, something could have happened to him, you know. Well, if he can't take care of himself at this age, there's not much use. Of Here we go. Uh, hey, what's all this? Oh, uh, hiya, Doc. Uh, look, it's Doc Kildare and Miss Payne. Oh, carnation. What's the idea of the stretcher, Dr. Gillespie? Nothing, Jimmy, nothing, nothing at all. I got an emergency call to come over and get him at the Cobania Club. So that's it. And at your age... Jimmy, I am not intoxicated. Maybe it's sciatica, Dr. Gillespie. Oh, uh, young lady, you keep out of this. Come on now, let's have it. What's wrong with you? Ah, confound it, I am merely suffering from a well-known tropical disease called the conga. The conga? Oh, Lady Donabe. Yeah, <laughs> that woman is the original whirling dervish. Oh, uh, Jimmy, will you set up an x-ray room in the morning? Think I'm out of joint in 14 different places. Be glad to. And putting it another way, you might say it was caused by being out of place in 14 different joints. Uh, Good night, Doctor. You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Les Crutchfield and directed by William P. Russo. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Ted Osborne, Georgia Ellis, Ed Max, and Isabel Randolph. Dick Joy speaking.